Anthony, I'm just greatly excited about this project, uh, having a video commentary of uh, this amazing book of Galatians. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you've been reading this book for uh, for many years and have uh, enjoyed it a lot as I have. Uh, but it's just great that we'll have an opportunity to share this with uh, viewers and others who have an interest uh, around uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we get going here. Talk to me. What do you see in the book of Galatians in the general sense? What, are we, what is this book all about? What's going on here? It's one of the most relevant books, I think, for our current scene. You know, this is not academic stuff to be pondered over simply in terms of the first century, but it bears on the Christian lifestyle of millions of different people uh -huh. today. So this is not academics, you know, this is not just dreary head learning as they say. Right. <laughs> well I don't like the distinction between head and heart because in the Bible your heart is your head, the heart <laughs> is where you think, where you operate right, from, right. not just your emotions. So to me this bears on what people are going to do uh, by way of lifestyle mm. in the coming week. Mm. It's mm. very very relevant mm. and my sense is that Paul is more impassioned in this book than practically anything he ever wrote <laughs> and his language is very very strong, almost R-rated you might say wow. <laughs> at some points. Yeah. Because he feels so strongly that people are losing the faith, they're mixing the covenants, they're oh. going back to Moses, instead of forward into the freedom of the new covenant. Okay. And that polarity between doing salvation through law, particularly law of Moses, mm. and doing it in freedom in Christ, in the Torah of Messiah, mm. as contrasted with the Torah of, of Moses, that's his major point. Very different picture yeah, yeah, in between those two things. Isn't it? Huge difference, a polarity, a, a tremendous disparity, a tremendous antithesis between don't let's do it this way, right. let's do it this way. Yeah. So you're hitting on, I think, what turns out to be the theme of this book. Yes. And there is a theme that underlies it. It's not just sort of a variety of issues so much as not it is an essential issue, an essential theme that right. Paul is bringing to us. And when we say Paul, we're talking about, of course, the Apostle right, Paul. Right, right. Our, our mentor, right. I think the one that we respect as one of the chief agents, if not the chief agent, alongside with Jesus, of course, Indeed. of the Christian faith. In the Greek scriptures, I want to add to yeah. These are Greek scriptures. They're written and given to us in the Greek language from the Shaliach, the Apostle. I want to get that Hebrew word Shaliach on the table. That means one sent, one who represents an agent, a plenipotentiary, mm. a commissioner mm. of Jesus himself. Right. And so I'm listening carefully because I'm hearing Jesus speak in Paul. Ah, yes, yes, yeah, I love it. Well then, uh, his, his theme then is um, this question, this issue about what you just referred to as the covenants. Right. Uh, and here we're focusing on uh, what Paul is going to later call, these are two great covenants. Uh, one that was brought to us by Moses, That's right. but then another covenant, a, a rather different covenant, brought to us by Jesus Christ. And Paul's yeah. going to talk about those two covenants and what Christians need to understand about those two things. That's exactly and, right. and that's really kind of the theme of his book. Absolutely it is, and it's written for the situation at that time. Yeah. Because, uh, may I suggest that the devil is very clever at saying to people, well, the Bible says you're supposed to do this. Right. Yes, it does. Uh -huh. The question is, did it say it to you now, yeah. or was it something said temporarily to Moses? Mm -hmm. That distinction <coughs> needs to be made very carefully, and Paul does it very Paul carefully. Paul is going to talk about all those issues in this book, isn't it? That's amazing. Yeah. I think, you see, the devil plays on our ignorance. I, I know uh, as a former nominal church girl, uh, regular church girl, I really didn't have any training in how to look at it, analyze it, and so if the Bible said I was to wear prayer tassels or nail the Ten Commandments literally on my front door, it does. <laughs> okay. It says a number of things, but it, does it say exactly that in the New Covenant? That's easy. I, I didn't have any basis for distinguishing between those two things. Wow, know? yeah. So uh, it takes uh, then someone like Paul to step in for us yes. and yes. to bring us uh, understanding and the wisdom of God to make uh, the distinctions that need to be made in these That's various right. issues. I'm glad you say that. God's will ultimately. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. it's Jesus speaking in Paul, but the Creator has decided to do things in a certain way, and yes. if He chooses to have a change of policy, then He has every right to do that. Mm -hmm. We need to get in line with His will ultimately, expressed right. in Jesus and in Paul. 
Well, uh, if you if you find it okay, I think uh, yeah. maybe I'll just read a few verses. Well, let's see what we come into here. Yes. Great stuff. Mm-hmm. So Paul is writing to the Galatians, and uh, he is saying to them, uh, first of all, uh, expressing who he is. This is Paul, an apostle, not sent from men, nor through the agency of man, mm-hmm. but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him, Jesus, that is, of mm-hmm. course, from the dead. And all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia. So Galatia was actually a region, wasn't it? A, a, yes, an area right, in Asia Minor, I think what we call now Asia Minor sure. uh, region. Good. Yeah. And then he's, he has this amazing greeting that he uses so often. He, he says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I love that. Indeed. Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us out of this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Yes. Wonderful greeting. Wonderful, amazing greeting. Yeah. Uh, similar to so many others that Paul. Well, said. these are his slogans, aren't they? I think we would teach. <laughs> they are, but we right. have certain ways of saying things which we repeat endlessly because they've impressed us when we learned them. And we want our students to reflect and develop some of these statements. But here, you've got God the Father. <laughs> yeah. 1,300 times in the New Testament, when you see off they ask God, mm-hmm. it means the Father. That <laughs> yes. should be rather powerful evidence. And then you've got this other person, he's called the Christ, the Messiah. Mm-hmm. So this other one is the Lord Messiah. Yes. He yeah. happens to be Jesus, Lord right. Jesus, Messiah. But he's not the Lord God and the Lord God in this greeting. The Lord God is clearly the Father, and then there's the Lord Messiah. That distinction is fundamental for Paul. I can't uh, imagine that Paul ever would have thought people would be taking the Lord Messiah and addressing him as though he were the Lord God. It's Isn't an amazing thing. A phenomenal development. Yeah. Paul would have been, I, I think, just aghast at, the <laughs> at, the, at such a thing. I think he would. I think he would rub his eyes. After all, in Luke 2.11, it says, Today is born in Bethlehem. God? I don't think no, no. God gets born. I mean, that would be... God doesn't very get born. Does God, does God get born? I, I doubt whether that ended Paul's mind. But who was born there in Luke 2.11 is the Lord Messiah, the yes. Christos Kiddos. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. The human Messiah. Well, I love Paul's distinction here. It's very clear. Mm-hmm. He's talking about God, mm-hmm. the Father. Mm-hmm. So now he's identified the Father as being God. Yes. But then when he comes to Jesus and he doesn't say, and God, Jesus, no. the God, Jesus. He's saying, the Lord, Jesus. And, uh, and then, of course, we know that uh, Jesus is Lord because God made him Lord. So that's in Acts 2.36. Those that's distinctions yeah. are, are less than clear in the public mind, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. obviously very clear to Paul. And to I his readers. Really, I think so. Yeah. I love the beauty and the simplicity of that. Yeah. Let's get it clear that God is the Father 1,300 times and Jesus is the Lord Messiah. Of course, <laughs> right. Psalm 110, 1 and all that. Another right. subject, but oh, yes. a very precious subject because it adds clarity to the Wonderful document. stuff. And all, and all things that Paul understood very clearly. From You pick that up in his reading. His I would think yeah. so. If you're a teacher on, on the scope of Paul, you've really got to be clear. He's talking to an ordinary folk who, who couldn't read. Mm-hmm. Many of them. Would yes. that be right? Yes, that's right. They weren't literate people even. Mm. Wow. And so to imagine that yeah. he's going to give them some fearfully complicated thing <laughs> is really very right. strange. Yeah. Well, let me read a little more. I am amazed, Paul says in verse 6, that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel. Wow. Which is really not another, verse uh, 7 here, only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. Uh, but even though we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. And then, and then he repeats that. Yes. He says, for uh, as we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to that which you received, let him be accursed. These are amazing words in this oh, opening are. area of Galatians. So what yes. we we've read we have read ahead. <laughs> yes. So we know where he's going with all this. But yeah. what is he really saying? Right from the very beginning, he's got their attention. What is he saying? Well, commentators do very well with this. They point out that Paul completely omits to go on with further greeting. Right? There's, mm. there's not a lot of stuff about. I hope you're all doing well and, mm. and so on. So he gets right to the point that's really burning him up in the sense that he's fearful that he's going to lose this whole group of people 
to Christianity. The gospel, mm -hmm. we need to realize, of mm -hmm. course, is the Christian faith, isn't it? Sure. And he's now issuing a double curse, which is very strong. You and I are not apostles in that sense. We can't repeat the twelve. We don't, we don't mm -hmm. use that kind of language. But Paul the Apostle is terrified that he's going to lose these people to another gospel, which isn't the gospel at all. Is that right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't rate as Christianity, even mm -hmm. though you give it the label gospel, because it's another and it's a distortion, he says. It's a very strong word. And Peter talks about distorting the scriptures to your own ruin. Apolia in Greek, an awful word. You know, mm -hmm. It's going to ruin you if you do it this way. Mm -hmm. So Paul is using every stop on the organ uh, panel you know, wow. to make his point here. So... It's so interesting then that uh, in this case, uh, it would seem that where Paul is headed is not to, uh, to say that these are a people who are not going to name the name of Christ. It's not that they're going to disavow Jesus right. uh, as such, but they're going into a distortion yeah. in their faith and a distortion in their understanding that has the effect of, of being very destructive. You know, that's a great point. It's much more subtle. It isn't just Jews saying, don't you dare believe in Jesus. Yeah, yeah. That's rather obvious, right? Yeah, we, yeah. we clearly understand today, we should always keep this in mind, that in Judaism, they do not accept that the Jesus who came historically is the Messiah, mm. whereas we Christians do believe that. That's sure. a clear distinction. Right. Difficult to blur. This is very much more subtle. These are people naming the name of Jesus who cannot move from the Judaism of the Old Covenant uh, into the New. That's the issue. So the, the subject that we're going to find that Paul is, is addressing here mm -hmm. in these uh, very uh, uh, foreboding yes. uh, opening words word. actually relates to these issues of what you mentioned earlier, the covenant. That's right. And shifting away from uh, a simplicity mm -hmm. of reliance on Jesus Christ and the covenant he brought and instead going back to pick up a prior covenant, the one that God brought to the people by Moses. Exactly uh, right. Yes, that's, that's the issue, and it, it consumes this whole letter. Of course, he deals with this in other letters too, in Romans and also in Second Corinthians 3 particularly. So it's an ongoing struggle. The analogy we used in class for what it's worth was this, that when in America it was thought that blacks and whites maybe should go to the same restaurant. Right. Why not? That sounds like a good idea. Right. That was, is the expression, I think, a sea change. Mm -hmm. A huge paradigm shift for people, wasn't it? Right. We got over it. Surely. Yes. Thanks the Lord. Yes. We're dealing with something similar here, because the Jew has been told that he's never ever to give up on his Mosaic law. He's right. never ever to go into a Gentile lifestyle in any sense. And so this is a very understandable and very major issue that they're dealing with here. Right. So it's interesting, too, then, that Paul is saying... Um, that that would in effect be a different gospel. If you're going to go back into Moses' law, suddenly we have a different a twist to all of this. We have a different gospel. A different and, and Paul is uh, sharply concerned about it. He's this. shocked at this. Yeah. He, yeah. He's really fearful. He's, right. no, he's no universalist. He doesn't think that everybody gets saved eventually, <laughs> you know, just by drifting along. Right. Uh, however merciful God may be, we know he's very merciful. Right. But he's very concerned for these people not to lose out on the faith that they have ostensibly espoused under his leadership. Yeah. I have to say this, this is so interesting, but I, I've been in church before where that uh, the pastor of the church would get up after announcing uh, some of his own particular uh, views or dictates and so on, mm -hmm. and then announce to the people, like the Bible says now, if, if you uh, hear anything else, or if you believe anything else that, other than what I have told you, yes. then uh, you know, you, this, you're under a curse. This is terrible. <laughs> uh, when in reality, uh, what Paul is bringing to us is what uh, all of us must aspire to, what all yes. of us must adjust to. That's right. And uh, it's not fair for a, a minister nowadays to get up and say, you know, the Bible says don't depart from what I've told you. Yeah. Well, it's don't depart from what Paul has told that's us. That's right. Because <laughs> and, he's an apostle. That's right. And we're, and we're all under that. Uh, under Thankfully. The yes. Isn't indeed. it nice to have one unified umbrella? I think so. Otherwise, what meaning is there that's in Paul's statement? I want you all to be perfectly united, brothers, <laughs> to be perfectly at one in all judgments, and we've got 30,000 denominations. Yeah. Wow. But one of the issues that's dividing us is this very critical matter of the covenants here. In Galatians. So then, obviously, this is a very important issue in Paul's mind. 
he just, mm -hmm. as we say, uh, cuts to the chase. He gets straight to the yeah, issue, exactly. and he wants their attention, mm -hmm. and he's going to expand on these matters uh, throughout this writing. It's, uh, it's wonderful. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I'm reading that yes. in, in verse uh, 10. Mm -hmm. For am I now seeking the favor of men mm -hmm. or of God? Or am I striving to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ if that was my goal. Wow, what a it? statement that is. Yeah. We could go on about that one, couldn't we? Yes, I, I think mean, so. Anybody who's making a salary in theology <laughs> should be, I think, uh, shocked by this statement. Mm -hmm. That if, if really the paycheck or the popularity with your congregation is your chief agenda, you are in danger of getting it wrong. Well, so we'd better be rather... Self-standing under the authority yeah. of Paul at this point. Okay. Surely we're not uh, on the same page with Paul if we're being motivated by matters other. No matter how dangerous pressing those matters might seem to be, you know, a paycheck can seem important to us. That's right. Okay. But I think uh, uh, recognizing that our ultimate fidelity has to be to Jesus Christ and to His message at, uh, at all costs. Uh, surely, verse eleven. For I would have you know brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. Wow. Wow. Not from the wisdom of man, not from the doings yeah. of man, but from God through Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What a statement. Yeah. Power pack stuff. Isn't wow. It? I just want you to know this, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> that what I'm telling you happens to come from God. Whoa. Wait a minute. Well, he's Paul. Yeah. He can do that. He can say that. That's right. <laughs> Verse 12. For I uh, neither received it from man, nor uh, was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. So for Paul, that means its, mm -hmm. it's, its ultimate source, then, is God. That's right. Uh, through and, Jesus. Yeah, through Jesus. Mm -hmm. a wonderful story. Mm -hmm. um, verse 13, For mm -hmm. you have heard of my former manner of life in mm -hmm. Judaism, mm -hmm. how I used to persecute the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. Amazing. Oh my goodness. Wow. He was a murderer, wasn't he? he? He was. He was actually a thug. Yeah. All being done, though, out of zeal yeah. for what he perceived to be the meaning of yeah. the Torah. I think he said uh, later on, he said, uh, I received uh, mercy, I received forgiveness yeah. because I did it ignorantly. Exactly. He's one of those folks who thought uh, he was doing the will of God by persecuting God's people. By putting them, dragging them out of houses and throwing them into prison. My goodness, what a change. Yeah. What a change. And again, the thing that was motivating him was, as you just said, mm. uh, this whole business about Torah, uh, the law of Moses, his zeal Absolutely. for the law. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. That gives us that statement in Romans where he, said, he acknowledges his fellow Jews as having a zeal for God, but not... According, according to, to knowledge, knowledge yeah. so is knowledge important? Yes. I would think so. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Life and death. Yeah, it uh, serious business. Serious business. What we believe is um, very crucial because it yes. it affects our faith and it affects all of our actions. Of course. And uh, so Paul, uh, at that time, his faith was uh, was askew from the will of God, that's right. and his actions were detrimental <laughs> to uh, the cause of Jesus. Christ. Murderous. Yeah. Absolutely murderous. Terrible yes. situation. Terrible situation. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, verse 14, mm -hmm. and I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my countrymen, but being more extremely zealous for my ancestral tradition. Ah, there we so, go. Wow. This is where we've always done it, folks. You know, my family says, and my grandfather, and my great-grandmother, and my Sunday school teacher. That's right. This is the way we do it. That's right. Don't let anybody shake that. I mean, that should uh, resonate, I think, yeah. with a few of us who've come out of various churches. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we uh, we have to somehow get beyond, and Paul did too. Uh, yeah. Paul himself had to yeah. get beyond yeah. the allegiance he felt toward his upraising, his upbringing, right. and uh, his traditions, yes. in order to make a break with it. But then look how God used him mm -hmm. after he was mm -hmm. uh, after oh, he made that marvelous. that shift. It's wonderful. It is. It's wonderful. We're reading his material to this day. Aren't we? It's wonderful stuff. I know. Right? That's quite a distinction, isn't it, to be read two thousand years later? I think so. <laughs> Pouring over you. That's right. That he penned one day. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah. Verse fifteen. And when he who had set me apart, yeah. even from my mother's womb, and called me through his grace, was pleased mm. to reveal his son to me, mm. that I might preach him among the Gentiles. I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood. So, 
it pleased God who had separated him from his mother's womb mm -hmm. that he would reveal his son in Paul. In Paul. Yeah, well. and that, isn't that nice? It's exactly the statement that God was in Christ. In Christ, yes. And in this case, the second Christ Corinthians is 5, 17. That's right, yeah, it's that's beautiful. Right. Yeah. Verse 17, uh, Nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went away to Arabia mm -hmm. and returned once more to Damascus. Mm -hmm. Then three years later I went up to Jerusalem to become acquainted with Cephas and stayed with him 15 days. Mm -hmm. So he's given a little bit of his history, isn't he? He is. Yeah. Yes. How these Good things developed. Right. He was away, apparently, at a time of meditation or getting his ministry worked out for some period of time before yeah. going back eventually to Damascus. And then, for the first time, meeting Peter. And Peter's the crucial uh, uh, foil for his discussion here because Peter was in trouble on this issue of the law, as we're going Indeed. to find out. Right. Verse 19. Uh, but I did not see any other of the apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Yes, that would be right. the, what would we call the half-brother of Jesus, right? right. Yeah. The same fellow who wrote the, uh, the epistle yeah, of James. Epistle. Epistle. Right, yes. and yeah. a genuine child of Mary and Joseph, ah, yes. let it be said, right? There are some who have said that Mary couldn't possibly have had children by the normal means, but yeah. this text is against that, yeah. clearly. Yeah, brothers and sisters. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it would have been interesting to have been James and have grown up with Jesus. Oh, yes. And uh, be able to look back and reflect yes. on all that. And also look back and maybe reflect on the time when they thought he was out of his mind. You know? Yes, that's right. My brother Jesus, he's lost yeah, it. Right. You would walk around saying, you know, he's I lost love, it. I love the, uh, the statement. <laughs> one, uh, one theologian who, uh, who made the statement that Jesus cloaked or hid his divinity <laughs> so well that even his own brothers didn't know he was God Almighty. I said, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he cloaked it so well that he never went around saying, by the way, I am God <laughs> Almighty. <laughs> well, now that really would have consigned him to the mental institution. Yeah. He actually claimed to be Yahweh when Yahweh is the sole creator of heaven and earth. To be another Yahweh walking the earth, you know, they, they had actually good grounds for complaint. He never said anything like that. Interestingly enough, I'm not sure that. Peter or James or John or Paul would have actually followed Jesus if no. he had been walking around making the claim that right. he was Yahweh. Identified him uh, as God. Yeah, I don't, I don't think yeah. he would. No, that's right. It's interesting. And he that, didn't. Uh, and he didn't put it, if by is you mean, you know, I am identified as the Yahweh creator of heaven and earth. That's just impossible. Yeah. It's interesting that Jews themselves recognized in Jeremiah, uh, Dan, this is slightly off the point of our verse, but. Um, it's remarkable that Jews recognized the city of Jerusalem was one day going to be called the Lord our righteousness. Mm -hmm. And the Messiah, I think it's in the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah, he's going to be called Yahweh our righteousness. Now they didn't think that meant that he himself he, he was, was Yahweh. He was Yahweh. But Yahweh right. was at work in him. Of course. And at work in the city so, in so the much city. that yes. you could say this city's name is Yahweh. Nobody <laughs> misunderstood that. It's, it's beautiful. The city and what's going on in the city speaks out speaks, that message. Speaks, cries out. And, and then the, the Messiah and what he's doing speaks out of that course. message. Of uh, course. Yahweh is our right. Tells us That's that wonderful. God is with us. Uh, but uh, not exactly that that Messiah is a second Yahweh. That's where we, I'm afraid, Terrible. broke the bonds yeah. of, of, of good sense yeah. and got into trouble. Yeah. yeah. We've, when we go that direction, we've lost touch with the realities yes. of the one God of the Bible and, yes. and uh, his people. And certainly. Jesus, of course. It certainly is. Verse 20, uh, <coughs> uh, we have it parenthetical here, but uh, now in what I'm writing to you, mm. I assure you before God mm. that I am not lying. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the things I'm telling you. But where's he going? What is he doing with all this, by the way? Now, we have to be clear. He's talking about his gospel. Yes which he is absolutely certain is the gospel. Yes. It is from Jesus Christ. It is ultimately from God. This is the only gospel that, the, that Paul preaches has, mm -hmm. and has preached. And he wants the people in Galatia to hold to that message, to that gospel, and not be drawn away back into something different, such as, uh, as he's going to expound, uh, such as uh, the keeping of Moses' uh, message. And, and, uh, it's painful uh, for him. Yeah, terrible. The psychology is interesting. It, all the techniques of, of uh, diplomacy yeah. to get the attention of these people yeah. are simply a, a lesson in how to approach people and get to their hearts, I think. Very good model. So again, he's, I guess he's rehearsing these things mm -hmm. for them so they'll realize mm -hmm. the gravity of what he's saying. This came from, 
from Jesus Christ himself, folks. That's right. from God. And the other form of the gospel isn't going to work. It's, it's, it's not, again, it's not an academic thing. Right. Is this going to work in your life? Are you going to be a Christian person if you do it by this method or this method? There's only one way that's actually going to produce the fruit of the Spirit now. Yes. And it ah. isn't the Moses way. That's right. Wonderful. It's yeah. not ultimately going to work. It's, right. I think we've used the analogy of trying to play golf with the golf club upside down. <laughs> yes. It doesn't work it well. It doesn't can, work very well at all. You it? can adjust <laughs> everything else, your shoulders, your finger position, That's your right. feet position, endlessly. But if you're playing golf with a tennis racket, let's say, the yeah. whole structure needs to be rethought. Yeah. And Paul is right. terrified that they would rethink the structure right. and mix Moses yeah. and Jesus in a way that's right. a poison, a poisonous mixture. Yeah. Paul is not going to leave uh, options for uh, toying with no. the old program, is he? Flirting with it. No, 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 no you're exactly, exactly right. right. Wow. Yeah. Um, so then he's going to say uh, to us in verse 21, Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown by mm. sight to the churches of Judea and uh, uh, which were in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Verse 23, But only they kept hearing, He who once persecuted us is now preaching the faith which he once tried to destroy. Marvelous. Wow. Yeah. The faith. Mm -hmm. The Christian faith in its proper form. Right? Wow. Yeah. I love that. The faith. Isn't Paul here, uh, in his opening remarks, isn't he setting his gospel as directly related to and from Jesus Christ and yeah. and ultimately from the God of Jesus Christ. Yes. God. Oh, yes. And he's even saying, I didn't gain this even from those who were apostles before no. me. This was by revelation. Yes. This is something God gave me and it's very clear very clear yeah. and straightforward. And he's uh, he's setting forward as it were his spiritual credentials in the matter. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so and nobody can match him. I mean, he's yeah. standing alone as an apostle here. He's yeah. kind of a Jeremiah figure. Isn't yeah. He? Why? Because God is developing something new. Yes. I mean, God can do that. He wants to. That's right. And he's going to have to use a human being or a series of human beings to introduce this new system. Sure. Paul's doing it here. I love it. Mm -hmm. Then the last verse of the uh, first chapters, we have it, and they were glorifying God because of me. So they went from fear of Paul in the beginning because uh, uh, of the uh, great harm he had done mm -hmm. to the churches. Mm -hmm. Now they're glorifying God because of what Paul had, had been doing. Yes. And uh, once again, I would suppose his readers in Galatia, many of them might have uh, been aware of some of these things yes. and, and realized, wow, you know, that yeah. is what God yeah. has worked a wonderful work in this man. They would be scared yeah. initially. Wouldn't yeah, they? yeah, This is the guy that used to drag us and our children off and <laughs> throw right. us into prison. Yeah. Come on, we better, yeah. we better go easy with him. Yeah, so right. he's using all the techniques of diplomacy to endear himself yeah. to them. Fantastic. I love it. Yes, it's wonderful. Well, that's, uh, that's an exciting that's opening chapter, I think. It is. Uh, uh, it is. Uh, and uh, I love, he's going straight to the heart of the matter. Mm -hmm. he's, he's telling them right up front uh, these issues, mm -hmm. and he's also... Uh, expressing to them the gravity mm -hmm. that's involved here. Yes. Uh, don't preach another message, another gospel, uh, besides this one. Don't let anyone preach it to you. That's right. Anything other than what. Yeah. I would think that comes down to us today. Uh, I, I think yeah. it does. I think yeah. the problem he's dealing with here has not yet been solved. I, I'm not sure that Paul ever achieved it to the degree that he would have liked because of this awful feeling that, you know, if we abandon Moses in some way, we're abandoning God's Torah, right. not understanding that the, God has more to do after Moses. Mm -hmm. Not that Moses wasn't very important, sure. but there's something new yeah. in the new covenant. That's wonderful. And then uh, in, the, in the balance of his writings here, Paul's going to go into all that. He's going to talk in about detail. it. It's interesting. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, great. A, for, a great first chapter, I think. Mm -hmm.